In today's video, we're checking out the weirdest airsoft items on the internet. I searched through a whole bunch of different airsoft stores, Etsy.com and Wish.com to find some of the most crazy and weird airsoft items for you guys. I mean, just check out some of these items we got in this video. We definitely found a gold mine in this one. Welcome to episode five of the series. Let's jump straight in. All right, guys, here is a little overview of all the weird boxes and bags in today's video. We have different color bags, a couple small boxes, and even a medium box. And of course, we have to end the video with a bang. This is the grand finale of today's video and the super weird shaped box. All right, first up, let's start with some of these little packages and envelopes, and then we'll go on to some of the bigger boxes up next. All right, let's see what is in this little tiny envelope. These videos are always funny because I have no idea what I ordered, and obviously you guys don't either, so it kind of makes it more fun for both of us. All right, let's see what we got. What the heck? All right, so we got this uh, weird little plastic thing on a top of a little Picatinny mount right there, and it looks like we have a second one right here to replace it. And this thing is actually a little BB sight protector. So you can actually protect your airsoft gun from incoming BBs from enemy players on the field. Oof, that was the most unsatisfying way of doing that. Oh, well, I tried my best. Oof. So there it is without the actual film on there. So actually you can see, you know, through your red dot sight with this guy in front. But I've always wondered if these guys will actually protect your airsoft sight and if it's worth it. Cause you know, obviously these look super annoying on your sight. Just it doesn't look uh, realistic. It just kind of looks like, uh, you know, weird. So I've always wondered if these are actually worth it, saving your super expensive red dot sight. So without further ado, let's go ahead and test this out. And by test it out, I mean shoot it with an extremely crazy airsoft gun. All right guys, this is my stupid plan to actually test out this BB red dot protector. So basically we put this guy up on my scar L and then theoretically we're going to act like there is a red dot behind Behind this guy obviously you know with the situation i can't really like put this guy upright too well obviously so it's kind of the best situation i have to actually you know get the uh, airsoft gun upright without further ado let's actually take our hpa war sport and see if this guy will actually withstand some bb shots <laughs> No way. Dude, the first shot just absolutely disintegrated this guy. What? I thought it was going to take like 10 shots or maybe like full auto, but damn. Literally the first shot absolutely destroyed this guy. Let's do one more shot while we can. Bruh. <laughs> Bro, this guy literally just shot it straight off. That is absolutely terrible. Definitely do not recommend this. Obviously, I know these type of things actually work, but this one particularly from Wish.com definitely would not recommend this guy. That is officially a fail. I had absolutely no idea it was gonna be that bad. I mean, that thing literally just shot it off in like three shots. That's so bad. It even looked pretty thick too. So uh, yeah, definitely not the best thing in the world. I actually had a lot of hope in this guy. It actually looked, you know, decently thick enough to survive, but yeah, that guy did not survive more than like three shots. That is hilarious. Real quick guys, I just want to tell you guys about my clothing and pack store wagarmory.com you can get this awesome sweatshirt or maybe even a hat or patch and stickers go check out wagarmory.com that will be the top link in the description down below now back to the video all right next up we have the pink boy let's go ahead and check this out all right looks like we have a bag in the bag Ooh, i remember this all right, so here's actually what is in that little bag. This guy is actually pretty insane. I do actually remember ordering this one. All right, so this is the first little unit that comes with this guy. It has a little plug down here, you know, little hollow tube in there. I have no idea what the heck this is for, but that's the first step what we got. It looks like we have a little wire thingamabob to connect the two units. And then we have this little tiny guy right here. But the next one, this is where it might look a little bit more interesting. So this guy actually you put on top of a Picatinny mount rail with that little area right here. And then as you can see with the little screen right here, this guy will actually count your BBs when you shoot them. All right, so I got this guy all set up pretty cool. So you basically turn on this little switch right there to the downward position, and then it'll actually turn on. And then you can basically set like whatever BB mount you want to actually count down. So with this first one, let's actually go with 25. These guys are obviously connected through this little cord. And then basically, when a airsoft BB goes through this little system at the front, it'll count as one down for the BB system back there. So I'll show you guys what I mean. That's pretty cool. Actually, it works. That's sick. That's sick. And then obviously it, like it blinks like when you're out of ammo. And then let's say you like want to switch mags and you have another 25 round mag. You just put this guy back in and you're ready to go again. Pretty cool. This guy actually reads the RPS pretty accurately too. That's, that's pretty sick. Let's try another little thing of semi-automatic. <laughs> That's pretty sick. Okay. So obviously it doesn't look the most uh, pretty on your airsoft gun, but if you are really someone that wants a BB counter, this thing actually works pretty well. So pretty sick little item. All right. Last little envelope of that little group until we move on to the next little group. Let's see what's in this guy. What? Bro, what did I buy? <laughs> 
All right, as you can see, I got an airsoft ballistic knife. This guy has some really cool features as well that you might not notice off the bat. And that's why I have this little airsoft shell right there. So for plastic airsoft knives, you can actually go behind people on the field normally and actually tap them on the shoulder. And that signifies a like a ninja kill or stealth kill. So there is one of the guy's features. You can actually use this as a normal airsoft knife, which is pretty cool. But its other feature, obviously, if you guys know ballistic knives in games like Call of Duty, this guy has another feature as well. So if you actually pull these little two screws downward, it has a little latch that opens up like so. And then you can take an airsoft gas shell like this, load it up with some gas and obviously a BB in there and load it up into the system like that and then close it up. And then once you actually close the mechanism up with the shell in there, there is this little button at the very bottom right there. Let's go test it out. All right, here goes nothing. Let's press the button at the target and see what happens. Whoa, it actually works? No way. I had like 50-50 chances that actually work out, but uh, wow, that's actually pretty cool. Okay, sick. Damn, okay, so if your airsoft field allows this guy, I definitely would recommend something like this. You have the utility of actually getting people out with the actual, you know, uh, fake a little plastic blade right there and tap them on the shoulder. And then if you get in a sticky situation where, uh, you know, you're running after someone and you need to actually, uh, you know, get them out with a little bit of distance, you have that option to press the button and have a little shell go off and shoot a BB. So <laughs> pretty cool overall with this guy. All right, this guy is too cool. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> That's so cool. Wow, okay. Definitely did not expect this guy to work so well. This is definitely one of the coolest airsoft items I've ever seen. All right, next up, let's check out what's in these little boxes. All right, let's put those to the side and check out what's in this smaller one right here. Ooh, what do we got in here? Yes! So at first glance, this guy has some little weird stuff going on at the top, but other than that, it looks like a standard little black 1911, and it kind of, you know, works as a spring gun. So check this out. But obviously, if you guys saw this little box of Tic Tacs, you guys probably know what this guy does. So how this guy actually works is you take the little Tic Tac box, you open it up, and you actually insert it into this little yellow box in the top of this little guy. And then the Tic Tac will actually shoot out the end right there. I can't wait to see actually what this guy chronographs at and obviously how far it shoots. So without further ado, let's go and test it out. Let's actually see how far it goes first. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, it's like uh, 10 feet max. All right, that's not looking good for this guy. Let's see what the FPS is. Oh, bruh. Oh, I shot two, okay. All right, let's try that again. No. Ah, <laughs> look, it says 23.6 FPS with 0 0.01 joules. Damn, it actually chronographs, that's crazy. 18.7 FPS, that's the actual first time I've ever seen zero joules, that's pretty funny. Let's see if this will even reach the target. Nope. Nope. Barely. <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, not the best. Definitely probably would not recommend this guy. That is a fail. All right, next box. Let's see what's in this guy. Ooh. All right, so first up, it looks like we have a little yellow box. Let's go ahead and see what's in this guy. All right, very mysterious. Looks like we have a little gas shell right here. That's green, so that's pretty cool. Looks like you put the green gas in right there and you load a BB up at the top right there. So what could this be? Looks like it's in some kind of little case. So without further ado, let's open this guy up and see what we're working with. All right, there we go. Let's take this guy out. Ooh. So this guy is like a little pocket airsoft pistol, like grenade launcher, shotgun, wherever you want to say. This guy is kind of insane. Okay, so it's like attached to the actual case right here, but I found that if you actually pull it, it's kind of like a grenade and it has like a little pin. So if you pull it, it'll actually come out right there. So there we go. And this guy has a little latch on the top. You basically pull that back. Then you latch this guy upward like so. You load in the loaded gas airsoft grenade shell like that. And then you click this guy in and then you're ready to shoot. So without further ado, I'm actually curious to see how this guy will work. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, first up, let's see what this guy's chronographing at. Woo! All right, looks like it is 222.2 FPS with 0.46 joules. <laughs> nice. Obviously, this isn't the most practical thing ever, but if you have a little bit of space for this little pouch, I think this guy would actually be a pretty cool addition to your airsoft kit. All right, up next, what do we got? Oh, okay, I think I remember what this is. This is, <laughs> this is actually kind of insane, hold up. This one is definitely one of the more crazy ones of the video. Oh man, how do you mount this? That's crazy. Okay, so after some investigation, I figured out what the heck this guy is. This is a dual 40 millimeter airsoft grenade shell launcher. So uh, how does that actually work? Well, I'll show you guys real quick. So you take a 40 millimeter airsoft grenade and you insert it into one of the sides right here, for example, and you click it in. And then you got your second one and obviously you repeat the same process. 
There you go. And then this guy has a Picatinny mount rail. You can actually mount it to the bottom of your airsoft gun like so. So this will be the bottom of your airsoft rail. You mount it up like so. And then on either side of this guy, it has a little safety right here. So pretty cool. You actually click this guy on to the red and that is on safe and that is off safe. And you can do that on either side. So it's actually pretty cool. And then obviously the main function of this guy is to actually launch these airsoft grenades. So you have three different ways to actually fire this guy. You can do the left shell, you can do the right shell, or you can actually press this little middle paddle and that will actually launch both these shells at the same time. So obviously you guys know what we're doing next. Let's go ahead and try this out. All right, so we got this guy attached to our scar L's you see right here. Now let's show you guys what grenades we're gonna use. So first up, we got this bad boy. We have the BBs in there. We just have to put the cap at the end. And then all we have to do is load up with gas at the bottom of the grenade shell. This one's pretty cool too. We have a whole bunch of different chambers for the BBs and then the little stem to put the green gas at the top right there. And this one's got a little cool shell to put on the top as well. All right, so let's load this guy up and see what it's got. So first I'm gonna do a shot with like each individual grenade shell and then we'll do one with that double button and shoot both of them at the same time. All right, here goes nothing. Ooh, it actually works, that's sick. Oh, another one what was at the end. Okay, did not expect that little second little uh, gas to pop out there, but all right, off safety for the second one. Let's see what this guy's got. That's sick. All right, as you guys can see, both of them work. That's pretty cool. This guy actually works to not expect that. All right, let's shoot both these guys at the same time and see what happens. <laughs> Damn, it actually worked. That's crazy. Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> this guy's actually kind of cool. All right, next up, let's see what we got. Packing peanuts, no! All right, these guys are always uh, interesting to see how to actually get this out without getting them everywhere, but uh, we might have no choice. Uh, so first up, it looks like we have a little plastic piece right here. <sighs> Pretty cool. Ooh, all right, let's see what we got. Oh, baby. Dude, this thing is crazy. But this guy is the legendary hand cannon from Destiny 2. So I thought it was kind of worth buying, you know, just to show you guys how insane this guy actually looks. All the really cool gold, the black coloring, even those little purple accents, as well as all the little details and all the little coloring, even like the little green on this little tiny like fake lasers or some futuristic like thing down here. I have no idea what this even is, but it looks so freaking cool. Unfortunately, it is not functional. So unfortunately, we can't actually shoot anything from this guy. I thought I was actually gonna be like half the size, you know, like not too big, but this guy is absolutely insane looking. And it does have like a fake like functioning hammer right here, but the trigger actually goes back. So that's kind of cool. And obviously the little hammer goes back as well. So that's actually kind of a little cool feature. And obviously this guy is kind of working as some futuristic like cyberpunk kind of like revolver, if you will. So instead of having those six shells, it has just one huge crazy shot as you can see right here. So you can actually take it out and play with it. It's pretty cool. Obviously it's just kind of like a gimmick, but it's definitely core being able to take this out obviously than not having the option at all. And it does actually come with this really cool stand. So if you precisely put this guy in, hopefully I'm gonna do this right like that. So it's kind of more of like a desk ornament or kind of like a little cool background. I'm actually put this in my studio just as like a little background piece, just cause it looks so freaking cool. But I thought you guys like me would enjoy looking at this thing. This thing is absolutely insane. So without further ado guys, let's move on to the next thing. All right, looks like we have quite a bit of things to go through in this little baggie. So without further ado, let's go with this blue guy up first. Ooh. All right, looks like up first we got some airsoft mask. So you guys know with the wish.com stuff, I tend not to actually use this stuff for fun. It's kind of more just to test out how bad it is. So whether if it's mesh or goggles or lenses, whatever I get in these uh, little boxes right here, I pretty much just get a crazy airsoft gun and try to destroy them and see if they'll actually withstand some shots. So the first one in that test will be this mask right here. And then up next, let's see what we got in this little guy. And obviously these guys are extremely crazy over market on wish.com. This guy has something insane, like 990 billion, like brightness laser for this guy. So without further ado, I wanted to actually just get this guy and see actually how bright it is. Sometimes these guys are insanely bright and we'll wait until nighttime to see how good it is. But I just wanted to see if it was absolutely insane, like the pictures on the site or if it's just like, you know, basically a scam. So without further ado, let's go actually wait until nighttime and test this guy out. All right, so obviously it's a little dark now, but I got this laser all set up. This thing's absolutely insane. I actually turned on just to like test it out. But dude, look at this. What? Look at this. 
It's like you have a whole bunch of like predator. You could turn this into like different squares with like lasers. It's like absolutely insane. It looks like basically like a disco party. Absolutely insane. And then obviously if you take this little end piece off, because that's kind of what's making it do all that stuff, it is just like a normal laser and it's pretty strong. So you can actually see the beam, which is kind of what I was going for. So obviously this guy isn't like insane, obviously, but uh, you know, it's actually not too bad. Like you could actually see the beam a little bit. So uh could be worse. Or I guess I went with a uh, skull theme for this video, weirdly enough. But this guy actually has these little tiny like mesh kind of style. And this guy actually has this little like, you know, plastic lens. So we'll see actually which one was standing an airsoft gun a little bit better and then the last little thing i believe these are airsoft goggles if i'm not mistaken yep i'm right these are little airsoft goggles comes with a little case so that's actually you know kind of nice oh and then it comes with another case and some extra lenses i guess let's go ahead and take these guys out and see what it looks like all right so here are the goggles from wish.com obviously i'll put in the screen the price for this guy as well but uh yeah this guy is already kind of uh, not the most uh high quality if you will but uh, you know might be promising we'll actually have to test this guy out let's actually see if these guys will actually withstand some bb shots all right guys we have two different airsoft guns we're actually going to be shooting the mask with. This is the Polar Star Warsport LVOA, and this guy is pretty insane. Let's check it out what it's shooting and the RPS as well. All right, so first shot is 426.6 FPS with 1.7 joules about. Second shot, 423.5 FPS with 1.67 joules. Last shot, 428.7 FPS with 1.71 joules. And then the RPS. It's about 25 rounds per second. And if it survives this guy, we'll go to the next one. And the actual final boss for these masks, if it survives the HPA LVOA, is this $1,000 TAC-41 Airsoft Snipe Rifle. And yeah, let's clone this guy because I'll show you guys this guy is absolutely insane. All right, first shot is 564.2 FPS with 2.96 joules. Second shot is 564.9 FPS with 2.97 joules. Last shot, 558.6 FPS with 2.9 joules. All right, we'll see if this guy survives. I'm basically just aiming for this uh, right eye right here. Looks like there is a quite a few dents, but nothing has pierced through yet, so that's good. But the only thing is it's kind of looking like it is uh, kind of getting loose at this side, so there's like a little hole now, which is not too good. Do some little full auto burst. Pretty much what I expected, uh, kind of shot through this little uh, part right here, as well as made a hole in the mass right there. But uh, let's actually aim for the uh, lens and see if it'll survive the burst of full auto. All right, it looks like this guy survived. Nothing actually went through, but it is severely dented, not good. Obviously, it's kind of warping at all the uh, you know sides, so this guy's probably any second about to fall off. As you can see, there's a huge hole now in this area because it's kind of like warping to this side. So uh, yeah, definitely would not recommend this guy. BB can definitely get in there and hit your eye, so not good. You can kind of see looking in there the difference of the like you know dents actually on the left side versus the right side. So the right side obviously we didn't shoot, and the left side we did shoot. So you can see how like much dent it is on the left side. Not very good. That would be in your eyeball. Not good. And just because we can, let's try a shot to the. Uh, same lens that we're shooting at with the LVOA for this guy. All right, you could see it actually like uh, further dented it and uh, fully took off the paint with that sniper shot, but yeah, it didn't pierce through. So, uh, you know, I've seen worse ones. Obviously, I would never recommend using this mask whatsoever. Use the proper safety gear that is necessary for airsoft, but it's always entertaining to see how strong these masks are. It just kind of like did a huge little dent with that sniper shot and as well as chipped off the little black paint right there. All right, we got the goggles up next. Uh, best of luck, goggles. Just start with a few shots. So far, it looks like we have some marks, but uh, nothing went through so far. All right, not too bad. I shot some to the uh, little upper right there with the plastic as well. We did get a whole bunch of marks, but yeah, nothing is uh, really going through. I don't really feel any denting as well, so not too bad so far. Let's do a little full auto burst and see what this guy has uh, got. All right, not too shabby. Obviously, you could see the huge marking of the BBs, but these guys seem to be uh, not too bad. All right, but we'll withstand the sniper. We'll check it out. Do like three shots. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. So you could see a little bit more of a uh, like white coloring with the sniper shots. Looks like it uh, definitely like made a little bit more of a scrape on the actual lens. But the lens itself still uh, kind of survived. But I did one shot to the side where these uh, straps are. And it literally just like shot off the strap. As you guys can see, that is insane. <laughs> Shot something off. 
Looks like I uh, shot the uh, lower left this guy, and it's, uh, yep, just about to fall off. So, uh, yeah, definitely would not recommend these guys, but that's pretty funny. Though. Like, the uh, plastic is super cheap, as you could kind of see, but at least the uh, lens survived. All right, this is the last one. I definitely have the least hope for this guy, but we'll try it out. Yeah, definitely not ideal. What if I shoot this guy with that full auto burst? Damn, yeah, this guy's uh, not having a good day. Yeah, basically a couple shots just fully shot off the lens. Uh, and as you can see, just kind of like shooting basically straight through the uh, mask. So definitely not a uh, high quality mask for this guy. I'll show you guys. I'll basically be able to like shoot the left lens out with just one sniper shot. And then we'll do a like, full auto mag of this guy again, just because I think it'd be kind of funny to see how messed up this guy will get. Bye bye, lens. Ooh. Oh, I missed the lens, but look how big this is. Oh my God, it shot like straight through, made a huge gash. Oh boy. Oh yeah, there it goes, damn. All right, I'm gonna try to replicate this shot on this side now, which <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Damn. Wow, there's a shot right there, it just went straight through. I'm gonna try to actually like aim for the middle and see if it'll just go straight through the teeth area. I was about to say, damn, the teeth area is strong, but yeah, I just went straight through that tooth right there. <laughs> but he needs to go to the dentist. All right, let's try some full auto and see if this guy will last. Boop, boop. Oh boy, uh, this guy, uh, definitely not the nicest uh, mask I've ever seen. Dude, this guy got incinerated. Damn, that's insane how cheap these are. Uh, yeah, never buy anything from Wish.com. This is uh, absolutely insane. Well, at least the uh, lens actually lasted uh, for these shots too. Obviously, like the came straight out of the plastic thing, so it doesn't even matter if these are strong or not, but uh, uh, at least the lens kind of survived. It does have these huge like bumps on the lens, but uh, yeah, at least he survived. This guy has definitely had better days. All right, last but not least in this box, let's check it out and see what we got. All right, looks like we have a tactical airsoft helmet. Man, I wore the most random stuff for these videos. Pretty standard little helmet. Looks like we have the little side rails on both the sides, as well as the little, uh, you know, NVG or GoPro mount on the top right there, as well as a whole bunch of Velcro on the top sides and uh, over there by the ear section and uh, right here for some reason on the front. Looks like we have some padding in the actual inside, as well as a little chin strap in there as well. But that doesn't really matter. This guy is from Wish.com, so you can expect some weird cheap stuff. And when I was up super late ordering all this stuff for this video, I was in a weird mood apparently because this is what I had envisioned for this helmet. If you guys were thinking I wanted to test the durability of this guy, uh, you'd probably be right, but uh, not in the way you might think. Yeet! <laughs> Even the sides didn't crack, so yeah, I got some uh, more scratches over here, but yeah, not the worst thing I've ever seen. Do it one more time. All right, so not the worst thing in the world. It could be obviously, uh, you know, landing in like good spots like right here and like at the corner, not on the like plastic. I was trying to land on the plastic to see if that would like snap the, uh, you know, rails or something like that. But yeah, so far kind of uh, held up, so not too bad. But I got one more test for this guy. Let's try it against our HPA War Sport and see if it'll last some shots. Not too bad. So obviously I'm aiming kind of for the uh, plastic area. It looks like it's cracking a little bit obviously right there, but uh, could be worse. Now for some full auto, we'll see if this guy really can last. Okay, so there's our uh, result right there. So this is kind of what I expected at the beginning. So basically I was doing a full auto burst at this like side rail and I expect the side rail to like at least crack, maybe have some like marks, but uh, definitely uh, didn't last very long. I basically like shot straight through the actual helmet as you guys could see right here. So yeah, probably wouldn't recommend this guy for a helmet. That's crazy, just shot straight through. That's scary, bro. All right, the grand finale box of this video. This thing is crazy and I want to show you guys what's inside. So without further ado, I actually do remember what's inside this one. Let's go ahead and unbox it and check it out. Definitely the uh, craziest box I've ever seen, but you guys will see why it looks so weird. It'll make sense in a second. Woo, baby. <laughs> Your boy got a riot shield. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so it looks like we have the little handle in here to put on the back, but this is it, guys. This is the whole riot shield. Absolutely insane. It says SWAT right there. This guy's actually pretty big. 
doesn't quite cover your whole body, obviously, like your legs and your torso, but uh, not too bad size. It's kind of like weirdly flexible more than I thought it would be. A lot of people on the field kind of have mixed opinions about this. Some people love riot shields and think it's like an effective utility kind of tool when you're playing an airsoft game, if you're trying to get objectives or protect someone, etc., etc. And obviously, if your field allows it, some players just straight up hate riot shield players. Sometimes it can kind of be annoying or kind of like block doorways to kind of like mix up the game in a way that kind of just isn't the most fun. Obviously, it's fun where you can actually shoot everyone, but if there's some guy just standing in the middle of the field with a riot shield and he kind of just like ruins the game sometimes. But for me, it kind of just depends on like what the game mode is and like what type of player is using it. Obviously, if they're cheating, it's really not fun because sometimes you shoot them in the feet and they don't call it. So it kind of just depends. Obviously, most people are very respectful with these, but other times people kind of abuse them. But other than that, these guys are pretty fun to actually have in your airsoft game sometimes. Kind of like a medium weight. It's not too heavy, not too light for what you would expect. But as you can hear, it's pretty much just like a clear plastic throughout the bottom and top of this guy. So you actually can still see, you know, who's shooting you and stuff like that. And it comes with this really cool handle as well. And then how this guy works is you basically just put your hand through in this strap right here. And then you grab this handle when you attach it like that. A lot of the airsoft riot shields you'll see in airsoft games are a little bit smaller. Obviously, you don't want to make it too unfair and have a huge riot shield just kind of be unfair running around the field. But with these guys, you actually need to kind of be creative how you protect yourself. Because obviously with this size, as it sits right now, your whole legs and your feet are exposed as well. But I pretty much just got this guy to answer one question. Question. What is it actually like to be shot by a crazy airsoft gun when you're using a riot shield? I've always been curious to see how it actually like feels and like sounds. It'll probably sound insanely crazy with all the actual BBs like hitting the riot shield when you're behind it. So I've always wondered this. Let's go ahead and answer that question and go ahead and test this out. So you can actually see what it's like getting shot by a rifleman. And then of course, next up would be snipe rifle. All right, let's try some full auto. I'm curious to see what that looked like. I'm actually curious to see if there's any marks on this guy. Oh yeah, definitely some marks. So uh, obviously the guy's holding up well and obviously nothing's gonna go through this type of thing, but uh, damn, yeah. But you can see a whole bunch of marks obviously on the uh, front and center right here. So that's interesting to note. Uh, yeah, basically over time, that would kind of suck. Like if you, you know, take this to a whole bunch of airsoft games, you're getting like mowed down by LMGs all the time. You definitely have like a crazy amount of like BB shots on the front. So you probably wouldn't even be able to see after a while. All right, now let's try the snipe rifle and see what that's like. Woo! Curious if the marks this will leave will be bigger. Obviously the sniper won't be this close, but I'm just giving you guys an example. Let's actually scoot back a little bit and see what the sound difference is a little bit scooted back. All right, let's see the damage. I don't really think these sniper starts are making any more of a crazy dent or anything like that. I think this guy is still holding up pretty much the same. It did look like it has a little crack in the middle right there too. So like, see these tiny little cracks right there? It's very interesting. Obviously I can't like feel anything, but it does look like it cracked right here, which is kind of interesting. Besides that, this guy's holding up decently well, but uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what uh, it looked like from your guys' angle. <laughs> All right, this is the last little thing actually in this box that we got from the Riot Shield. Let's go ahead and check it out. This is the grand finale of the video. And honestly, one of my favorites to test out as well for this video, I actually saw this on the field one time is absolutely insane. Let's go ahead and show you guys what we got. Little owner's manual right there. And that is what we're working with, people. Check that guy out. So here's obviously the little cord to actually charge this guy up. But what does this guy actually do? So uh, this guy obviously seems to be some kind of like end piece for your airsoft gun, but this guy is a little bit different than what you probably would expect. It's pretty cool too. It actually says airsoft only, which is actually a cool little feature right there. And this is the little end right here where you can see through all these little like weird LED lights actually in the system right here. So a uh, very interesting little design. So this guy is actually known as an airsoft tracer, but it has a little cool feature, making this guy definitely one of the coolest tracers you can buy. What is an airsoft tracer and how does it actually work? So basically when these BBs get shot through this little system, this little guy will actually flash internally and then it'll light up the BB and it'll look like the BB is glow in the dark. It's actually a really cool feature. Definitely my favorite thing to actually add to any airsoft gun when playing in an indoor airsoft field. It just makes it look really cool on camera. So not only does this guy actually illuminate airsoft BBs and make them glow in the dark like I just mentioned, this guy actually has a crazy little LED flash at the end of it right here when actually every time you shoot this guy, it actually looks like a real muzzle flash when it's going on. 
off. So obviously if you're shooting a real steel at nighttime, you'll see a crazy little like bright fire kind of go out the end of the actual real gun. So obviously that does not happen, but this guy actually makes it look like something like that. So if you have a gas pull back airsoft gun with a little bit of gas coming out the end of the barrel, the gas will actually get illuminated by this like yellow and orange light, making it look like a real life muzzle flash. So I've actually seen this work on the field one time and it's absolutely insanely cool to look at. So without further ado, let's actually go ahead and wait until nighttime and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. This thing is super cool. All right, we got this guy all set up on our WeTech Scar. This guy's a crazy hard kickback and I loaded up the magazine with propane so there should be even more gas. So let's see what this guy looks like. You can at least see from my point of view that like, the BBs kind of like more yellow, kind of cool. This guy actually has two different modes, so now we're going to try the second mode out. Oh, that's sick. Literally, like, I can see, like, the smoke and, like, the little yellow flash, like, from my point of view, too, on full auto. Just because, like, on full auto, there's way more gas, so you can definitely see it way more. It's pretty sick, though. Yeah, full auto is definitely the way to go. Forgot the scar is a little crazy. All right, now let's do some photo. That's basically where the fun's at. 